Elephant attacks on humans are a growing concern with frequent incidents causing serious consequences for villagers and tourists. Such encounters at times end tragically. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe now so you don't miss out on new stories. In today's issue, we'll look at four stories of elephants attacking humans. What happened to the victims? The answer to this and other questions you will find in the video. Welcome to Wild Assault. This story took place in Thailand when a 13-year-old elephant on whose back a Scottish tourist was sitting suddenly attacked him. At first glance, nothing foreshadowed the trouble. The elephant had a driver and the 16-year-old stepdaughter of the tourist. However, what happened shocked everyone. The 16-year-old girl Elid Hughes and her 36-year-old stepfather Gareth Crow went on an elephant tour with a local guide to the tropical island of Samui in Thailand to spend their vacation. In early July 2021, researchers from the United States reported the tragic case, which caused shock and surprise. An incident occurred in Thailand demonstrating that elephants can sometimes attack humans with disastrous consequences. In this story, the main characters were a 13-year-old elephant and a Scottish tourist. The events unfolded on the tropical island of Samui, where 16-year-old girl Eileen Hughes and her 36-year-old stepfather Gareth Crow decided to go on vacation. One of their adventures was to take part in an elephant tour to enjoy unique views of nature and experience the amazing atmosphere of the rainforest. The tour was organized by a local guide who promised the tourists an unforgettable experience and safety. The morning started normally and with no signs of impending problems. The elephant standing still with the chaser on its back seemed friendly and relaxed. Gareth sat on the elephant with eyelid positioned behind him in the open space. The chaser led the animal confidently, and the stepdaughter watched the surrounding beauty with great delight. However, suddenly, and without apparent warning, the elephant began to attack Gareth. The huge animal told forward, swerved off the path, and dropped the hiker to the ground with force. Eyelid, who was on the back of the elephant, watched in horror as her stepfather collapsed defenseless. After a few seconds, the attack was over, but Gareth had already lost consciousness and died on the spot from his injuries. The elephant's driver tried to keep the animal under control using a spear with a hook. However, angry, the elephant abandoned its passengers and attacked people. This shocking incident shocked not only Eyelid and their family, but also the world. Researchers have raised questions about the safety of such excursions and how to prevent similar tragic incidents in the future. Perhaps elephants, wild animals by nature, can be predictable, but in this case, no warning signs were seen. Thai authorities are now investigating this tragedy to find out the reasons for the elephant attack and take appropriate measures for the safety of tourists. In the case of Rambo the elephant, it is hypothesized that the cause of his aggressive behavior may be gonation a natural reproductive cycle in elephants characterized by increased hormone levels and hostile behavior. However, the local animal development authority denies this theory, pointing out that it is contrary to reality. Rambo the elephant was sedated with special tranquilizers and sent back to his enclosure, where he will have to spend a 15-day rest period. After that, he will be used again for excursions with tourists. An unexpected attack by an elephant on Northern Ireland resident Stephen Montague and his family while on vacation in Africa has become a real nightmare. The video describes the terrifying moment when they were in a restaurant in Zimbabwe and an elephant suddenly pounced on them. The family managed to escape, but Stephen's brother was injured in the attack. However, thanks to the swiftness of the security guards, they managed to avoid even more serious consequences. The report also mentions that although elephants are not usually aggressive, males can be dangerous and attack humans. The following will provide a detailed account of this horrific incident and also reveal the story behind the creation of the video that witnessed the event. The terrifying events unfolded when an elephant that had broken its usual habits attacked a group of Northern Ireland residents vacationing in Africa. 
As Stephen Montague sat in a restaurant in Zimbabwe with his relatives, it came as a shock to everyone when the animal swung its massive trunk with force and knocked them off their chairs. Stephen's brother was seriously injured when the elephant's tusks pierced his body. However, thanks to the intervention of security guards, the family on a photo safari escaped the insidious attack. It was huge and imposing, its tusks huge and sharp. The elephant slowly approached the group, making loud noises and slapping the ground with its trunk. The people around them began to look nervously and puzzled, but no one could foresee what would happen next. Suddenly, the elephant rose abruptly on his hind legs, swung his trunk freely, and struck with force at Stephen's brother, who was closest to him. The blow was so powerful that it instantly threw him off his chair and the tusks pierced his body. Screams and panic filled the restaurant. People rushed to hide under tables and behind walls, trying to escape the fury of the attacking elephant. The security guards working in the restaurant reacted instantly. They managed to distract the elephant with their presence and noise, attracting its attention. With dedication and courage, they stood up for the guests and tried to scare the animal away. However, the elephant continued to attack, getting closer and closer to the Montague family. Eventually, through a single chance, the guards were able to push the elephant away and called for reinforcements. When it eventually retreated, everyone exhaled in relief, but fear and anxiety still filled the air. Stephen's brother was immediately taken to a nearby hospital where he received emergency medical treatment. In subsequent interviews, the parents of Stephen, the young boy who was attacked by the elephant, appeared in front of reporters. Their eyes showed strong emotions, gratitude and relief that their son was able to avoid more serious injuries and survived. Their voices sounded reverent as they expressed their gratitude to everyone who helped Stephen and provided support during this situation. Stephen's father was particularly concerned about his son's condition and emphasized his hope for a full recovery. He could not hide his gratitude to fate and the realization of the fact that Stephen had survived such a terrible attack at all. After posting the video on YouTube, it went viral and generated a huge response on social media. This event was an example of how unpredictable and dangerous encounters with wild animals, especially male elephants, can be. In recent days, Thailand has seen several tragic incidents involving elephants that operate in various tourist attractions. The latest such incident was the attack of an elephant on one of the tourists on Chang Island. As a result of the attack, a German tourist was trampled to death while two Russian tourists had to jump off another elephant, one of them requiring medical attention. The injured Russians are sure that the owners of the elephant village and elephant guides are to blame for this tragedy. In connection with this incident, the Thai authorities intend to investigate and take measures to prevent similar cases in the future. It also became the third case of elephants attacking people in Thailand in the last week, the elephant on which tourists were riding in the Elephant Village on the island of Chang, Ko Chang in Thailand, at the end of the tour, suddenly attacked a German tourist and trampled him to death, while two Russian tourists had to jump from another elephant, one of them was injured. The tragedy occurred during a tour in the Elephant Village on the island of Chang in Thailand, there was a terrible accident. The elephant on which the tourists were riding suddenly attacked one of the visitors, causing him fatal injuries. The incident occurred in the afternoon on Thursday. The group was gradually descending from the elephants, completing the tour. Suddenly, the elephant on which the guys from Russia were riding, provoked by photographing a German tourist, began to behave aggressively and attacked him. All the witnesses of the terrible incident simply could not believe their eyes when the elephant trampled the German to death. In order to save their lives, two other Russian tourists who were on another elephant, decided to jump off the elephant during the attack. The second elephant, on which the tourists were sitting, became very frightened and started kicking and standing up on its hind legs and then ran. The guide, who had already gotten off it, yelled to the Russian tourists to jump off immediately. One was lucky, she immediately landed on the grass and her husband, when jumping, was hit by a bench on which they had previously sat on the elephant's back. 
This bench dangled from side to side on the elephant's side and hit the husband very hard in the ribs. It is still lucky that the husband, already after this blow, fell into the grass. If the elephant had carried him a few more meters, there would have been rocks, and then the bruised ribs would have been too much to deal with, Tatiana said. The man was taken to hospital after the incident with severe bruises and suspected rib fractures. After an x-ray examination, it was determined that there were no fractures, but doctors decided to schedule another examination in a week. During this time, cracks or hidden fractures may show up that may go unnoticed on the initial scans. The Russian woman's opinion was that the owners of the Elephant Village and the Elephant Guides were to blame for the tragedy. According to her, it is either elephant abuse or something else that people are to blame. And she does not believe that an elephant could have attacked a human for no reason, as animals do not possess malicious intent. It should be noted that this is the third tragedy involving domestic elephants that has occurred in Thailand in the last week. Recently, in the south of the country, an elephant that was working at a logging site killed its owner and then tried to hide its body under branches from the forest. In another incident in the north of the country in Chiang Mai, a male elephant attacked his guide, with whom he had been working for over a decade, impaled him on his tusks and trampled him. The incident caused horror and shock among tourists and park staff as well as eyewitnesses. Local police were urgently called to the situation and arrived on the scene to investigate the circumstances of the incident. It is still unclear what caused the elephant's aggressive behavior. Perhaps the animal was frightened or angered by the actions of tourists during the tour. The following story begins with the fact that every week, for the past seven years, Wendy Martin has awakened to the same nightmarish reality. In it, a huge creature has been tossing her mercilessly into the air. Fervor is building up, and pain is literally coursing through her body. With each awakening, 46-year-old Wendy loses her composure, bursts out of her bedroom, and hurries to the landing in her five-bedroom house in Godalming, Surrey. Her husband was often abroad due to work, and so it was often her children, anticipating hearing her inconsolable cries, who soothed her, brought her back to bed, and supported her through the morning. It is seven years since those unfortunate events at Ilngwasi Lodge, a hotel in Kenya run by Ian Craig himself, a wealthy conservationist and father of Jackie, Prince William's former girlfriend. Yet the horrific incident that occurred on that sunny morning hour still brings back Wendy's pain deep within her soul. No wonder. Wendy was impaled by the elephant's tusks from front to back in four different places, destroying her kidney and narrowly missing other important organs. In addition, the elephant stepped on her with its knees, weighing three tons, and crushed her pelvis. Since then, she has undergone 16 surgeries to repair her body. Despite the improvement achieved through plastic surgery, the scars on her legs, stomach, back, and buttocks are still horrifying. Recently, when she finally plucked up the courage to wear a bikini, a stranger on the beach asked her if she had been attacked by a shark. Even now, some triggers, such as the sound of an elephant on the TV, take Wendy back to that attack. Shares Wendy, a wife and former physical therapist who lives with her husband Steve, a 53-year-old marketing director at Qatar Financial Center, and their children, Matthew, 17, Roseanne, 15, and Emily, 11. They had a huge wooden elephant in their kitchen, a souvenir they had brought back from Africa. But it was too painful for Wendy to see it every day, so she moved it to the garage. This week, at least one part of Wendy's nightmare culminated in a convincing court victory in Kenya, when a judge found that Ian Craig, the owner of the plot of land, was partly responsible for her injuries. Wendy says, At the trial recently, Ian Craig expressed his hope that it would all be over and forgotten as soon as possible. She has never heard such a callous and contemptuous attitude. It will certainly leave a lasting impression jabbed and changed forever. In addition to facing nightmares every day, Wendy has to relentlessly take pain medication. Her balance is shattered, with nerve damage throughout her body and severely limited physical abilities. Nevertheless, she realizes that fate is favorable to her, that she is still alive. Wendy has had the opportunity to review a list of elephant attacks in recent years, and every one of them has ended in death. 
with the exception of her case. At the time of the attack, Wendy and her family were living in Nairobi, the capital of Kenya, where her husband worked as a British diplomat. In June 2000, after four years in Africa, they were preparing to return home, saying goodbye to this amazing country. They decided to spend their last weekend at the luxurious Il Nguesi Lodge Hotel. Located a five-hour drive from Nairobi, surrounded by the 45,000-acre Lion Wildlife Sanctuary, this unique hilltop lodge with stunning panoramic views is perfect for romantic vacations, even for celebrities like Prince William and Kate Middleton. Il Nguesi was once marketed as a wilderness vacation with minimal to no wildlife, says Wendy. Wendy and her family had been there twice before, and they were fine with it. The cottage is serviced daily by local tribes, is completely open, and has its own pool. It was incredibly convenient for the family to work in a remote location. But Wendy never worried about animals that could be dangerous to children. She had this perception. At least, that was her perception. All the rooms were open, so even a leopard could get in while the family slept. On their first night at Pound 130, the manager asked Wendy and her friends if they would like to go for a morning run. It was agreed that Wendy and her friends, Jenny and Jeremy, would get up at 7 a.m. to go for a run before it got too hot. Some people speculated that by running through the bushes, she herself was the cause of the attack, says Wendy. But it was the staff's suggestion as entertainment, and she knew her friend had run here before, so she thought it was safe. Sure enough, nothing seemed to portend trouble. However, after 45 minutes of running, as the group was making their way back to the hunting chalet, they came face to face with an elephant. The first sound that reached Wendy was the elephant's trumpet call, Wendy recalls. Then she saw its huge head with its giant tusks, its ears flapping, and immediately realized she was in danger. Instantly, a loud stop was heard from the guide's side, in response to which they all stopped like dumbstruck. Instantly, he shouted, run, and the company in which Wendy was, at once distancing themselves, resorted to different directions. Now, realizing that if they had all stayed together, their chances of scaring off the elephant would have been much better, they realized that they had missed a valuable opportunity. In addition, she now knew from Wendy's stories that there were steps leading to the lodge only 300 yards away, and if the guide had warned them of this, they might have been safe. Many people who experience traumatic events remember little or nothing of the incident itself. But Wendy feels all those moments being restored to her memory. He clearly recognizes how she tripped, and then the guide took it upon himself to help her up and saved Wendy as they ran for safety. Wendy's friend heard the elephant coming toward her. In desperation, she dashed under a bush and curled up in a ball. Fear encompassed her, filled with terror. The next moment that lingered in her memory was his head striking Wendy and the sound of his tusks tearing the covering of soil around her. He pushed Wendy through the shrubbery, piercing her body with his fangs before lifting her into the air. As Wendy fell to the ground, she managed to somewhat consciously decide to lie still and play dead, hoping this would all be over. Fortunately, her plan worked. With a snort, the elephant disappeared into the thicket. The first to reach Wendy was her friend Jeremy, who urgently called for help. At this time, Jenny returned to her hunting lodge and immediately got into the Land Rover with her husband to find her fellow runners. However, no one had seen the local guide. All she remembered was feeling unbearable pain, Wendy said. She looked at her body and will never forget the horrible sight she encountered. There were holes everywhere and a pile of blood and flesh lying next to her. One of her first thoughts was the need to find shelter, as she was freezing despite the increasing heat of the day, and she felt her body was about to leave her due to the shock. By then, Jenny and several workers from the gatehouse had appeared next to Wendy. Surprisingly, none of them appeared to have a medical background. Wendy took charge and applied her first aid knowledge. She said, I knew my wounds were fatal, and she needed to remain conscious to survive. After asking Jenny for help, Wendy asked the staff to remove their plain red uniforms to wrap around her mangled body. Upon returning to the lodge, the staff immediately contacted Ian Craig and asked for help. Wendy's husband, Ian, who was in a dream state, was immediately informed of what had happened. 
When Steve arrived to visit his wife, his face was filled with horror, Wendy recalls. He later told her that she was completely unrecognizable and looked like a pathetic, disfigured creature covered in wounds from head to toe. Steve ran back to the gatehouse to fetch a stretcher. He sat down next to Wendy. Her injuries were so serious that they feared the worst and mutually said goodbye. She asked him to also say hello to the children. A group of people gathered around Wendy and remained in indecision for half an hour until Ian Craig, who had arrived with two planes, joined them. He brought with him a private nurse who was caring for a friend of Craig's who was suffering from cancer. Then, Wendy was taken to a hospital in Bushy, an hour away, but the doctors were unable to declare her physical condition acceptable for their limited capabilities. Wendy was airlifted to Nairobi, where she was rushed to the hospital four hours after the attack. All the way through the flight, she couldn't stop thinking about her children, she says. She realized that if she lost consciousness, she would die. And with burning eyes, she tried to stay in the light for the sake of her offspring. Her body was like ice, and the shock was getting worse by the minute. Fortunately, the elephant's tusks had not severed her major arteries. Otherwise, she would have died of blood loss on the spot. After the flight, Wendy underwent six hours of surgery to stabilize her condition and ended up in the ICU. Her injuries were very serious. A crumpled kidney, which had to be removed, fractures to her pelvis, sacrum and vertebrae, broken ribs, and wounds to her abdomen, lumbar region, and legs through which the elephant's tusks had passed. The first few days were life and death, and doctors warned the family that the chances of her recovery were extremely slim. Wendy remembers feeling like she was going to die from all these injuries, and every time she opened her eyes, she was surprised that I was still alive, Wendy says. The hardest part happened four days later when my kids got a visit. She still starts crying when she thinks about it. Wendy had never been separated from them before, and they came to see my face swollen with bruises and my body connected to various medical devices. My three children stood by my bedside and cried. They were very worried, and the expression on their faces was full of trauma and pain that will be remembered forever. Ten days later, Wendy, who had private health insurance, was flown back to the UK by plane where she was to spend another three months in hospital. Her recovery was complicated and long. During surgery to staple her pelvis together with metal screws, she risked being paralyzed afterwards, and when she returned home, her body was suffering from several hernias where elephant tusks had punctured holes in her muscles. The wound on her leg had also become infected, turning into a large open wound. Wendy was convinced at one point that she was going to have to amputate her leg, she recalls. It was a very difficult time for her. She had to fight for her life every hour with constant and excruciating pain. In addition, she had three children to take care of. Always an active and caring mother, she suddenly had to move around with the help of a walker or a wheelchair. Her husband was still overseas, now in Dubai, so Wendy had to hire a caregiver to help her cope. She tried to be optimistic in front of her children and kept telling them that everything was going to be okay, but knew in her heart of hearts that it would take a long time until things got better. Even as the wounds began to heal, Wendy still had a hard time accepting her new body. She had always taken pride in her figure, going to the gym and eating right. Now she felt broken and maimed. No wonder she didn't feel comfortable in swimwear, trying to treat her scars with pride, but... People stare at them all the time. Aside from the recovery process, Wendy faced a lengthy legal battle against Ian Craig. Immediately after the incident, her husband sent Craig an email asking about insurance and wanting to understand how such an attack could have happened. At that point, according to Wendy, all they wanted were answers and reassurance that insurance would cover what had happened. At first, Craig said they had insurance and attorneys for the two sides began corresponding. However, after three years of intense correspondence between the attorneys, it became clear that there was, in fact, no insurance. As a result, Wendy decided to sue and filed a lawsuit. She had no idea that Ian Craig was the owner of the land or the father of the girl Prince William was dating, she says. Given everything Wendy had been through, she just wanted justice and felt a great responsibility to prevent this horrific experience from happening again for other families. 
Over the past four years, Wendy has spent more than 100,000 pounds, all of her family's savings, on legal fees and has returned to Nairobi six times. The legal battle Wendy faced was finally concluded this week when it was found that Ian Craig, Ilngwesi, and Liwa Wildlife Conservancy failed to provide proper care for their guests and are jointly and severally liable for 100% of the costs. The court hearing also heard that the manager of the gatehouse and Ian Craig himself had been informed of the elephant patrol with cubs around the gatehouse as early as the previous evening of the attack. No information about the danger posed by the elephants was given to the guests. By then, there were no regulations requiring armed guards to accompany guests into the bush, which is important given the presence of big game. Wendy was quite shocked when she found out the elephants had been there all along, she says. If she had known there was any danger, she would never have gone for a run. Wendy is not a risk taker. Throughout this, Ian Craig has been trying to find a way to deal with the situation, claiming that opposing it would harm nature conservation in the area. However, this has nothing to do with nature conservation. It's about looking after paying guests here. Wendy absolutely believes that Ian Craig has done a valuable job in conservation, but that doesn't change the fact that because of his negligence, I nearly lost my life and could have left my children motherless. As a result, Wendy could receive a payout of 800,000 pounds, although the exact amount has yet to be determined. But for her, it's not the money that matters most. Given what has happened, it could be many years before she gets any compensation, she says, but at least Ian Craig has admitted his responsibility. Wendy is determined to move forward with her life. At least now she's hopeful that despite her injuries, she can look forward instead of backwards. This shows that elephant attacks on humans are not rare and often end in tragic outcomes. All the blame should not be placed on these huge and intelligent animals. They are brought into such situations by humans. Humans have not yet found a compromise solution that can satisfy both sides, so that humans can farm efficiently and elephants can live peacefully in their usual territories. When such a compromise is reached, the aggression of these powerful animals will decrease, 